Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be going through the headliner replacement in my 2014 Chevrolet Caprice PPV. The main reason I wanted to replace a headliner were due to the holes present in the headliner from the police lights. This is for the spotlight right behind the front dome light. And then the material is broken apart and there was actually some drillings left behind from the police agency drilling the holes through the roof. And those are falling through some of those holes. I was able to find a fairly good shape headliner at a local wrecking yard. And the removal of the headliner itself from the roof is not too hard. It's mainly held up by a lot of the materials around it, except for the clips at the rear. But there are cables at the A pillars and C pillars that need to be uncoupled from their electrical connectors and retention clips. And the ones on the replacement one weren't all that great. So I wanted to spend my time and gracefully remove the old headliner to be able to reuse those. So let's get into the video where I show you where I dropped the headliner and some tips that I learned along the way. You'll see me putting some plastic over the seats and everything here to make sure I catch those drillings that are present in the headliner. I didn't want those getting embedded into the seats or the carpet and cut someone or become a, like a metal sliver going forward. So that's why I have the plastic going into the vehicle at this point. And the dropping of the headliner involves mainly removing the support structures around it. That includes the A, B, and C pillar interior trim panels. The front sun visors, the front dome light, and then the only piece that's really holding up the headliner from the headliner itself are the metal clips that are on the top side of the headliner right in front of the third brake light. So removing the interior trim panels has its challenges at times. The center ones, you need to remove the lower section to expose the Torx headed screws. And then the sun visors are pretty easy to remove. I'll mention the installation of that in just a little bit. and. The front dome light, there's three connectors for the uh, dome light in the front. And I left the rear dome light in place because that was coming out with the headliner. And overall, it took about 30 minutes, as you're seeing in this time-lapse video here, to get the headliner to be dropped. But to disconnect the wiring harnesses in the back, you do have to remove the deck lid cover behind the rear seat. So you have to take out the rear seat and then deck lid cover to expose the electrical connectors back there. So add that time into it, which is about 10 minutes or so to remove the rear seat and then you another five or ten minutes to remove that deck lid cover. This is the original headliner removed from the vehicle on the garage floor. I am going to take some of those foam pads off of that because the replacement one doesn't have those but you can see the hole for the front spotlight there and that's just a gigantic hole right by my face. I can see it every time I look to the right and here are the drillings that are left behind from that drilling of that center hole on the top of the roof. So I want to make sure I clean that up and of course the rear dome light was about to fall out. So this was definitely a candidate for replacement. Here's the replacement headliner but without those additional four foam pads I do transfer those over from the original headliner using a hot glue gun to adhere them. And then we have the front right we have two cables and one that's not clearly in picture here is actually to the tweeter in the A pillar trim panel. And then on the C pillar area on the right rear, we have this cable that comes out and connects. It's pretty easy to connect and disconnect. The front left, we have the tweeter connector again for the A pillar trim panel, and then that white connector that took a little bit to get the retention clip out, so be careful with that one. And then the left rear, we have these two connections that go under the deck lid cover. Then for the front dome light, you have two connectors for that and one for the microphone. And then the lower right, we have the interior police dome light connector, which I use as one power source for my outer demi mirror. And in the back, we have the third brake light connector. And I refreshed the foam padding because it was quite brittle on this one. And this was better looking than mine. And I transferred over my third brake light pulser. I drilled a couple of holes on the plastic and zip tied it to the side. The A pillar connector on the front left for this particular electrical connector is somewhat hard to get off. The underside of the actual connector from the headliner has a little plastic tab that you push out and that will disengage it from that particular part of the connector. And then the two portions of the white electrical connector connect up pretty easily. And on the front right, we have the AM FM antenna connector that needs to be connected at the A pillar. And at the C pillar, we have the same cabling, but notice there's a secondary cable running up there, but that's for my XM radio antenna that I added. And then here's the bottom side of the AM FM antenna in the center of the roof, just for your information. And here's my XM radio antenna that I added in one of the existing holes drilled for the police equipment. 
And on the left rear we have the cable that comes down that splits off into two electrical connectors on the deck lid. That's why you have to remove the deck lid cover. Make sure you get them routed through the cabling retention clips on the side and then drape it down here and reconnect them. One of the things I learned during the installation process of the sun visor clip is the plastic pin that you push through this to hold the plastic shroud over the metal clip underneath won't go in with the plastic clip and the headliner all in place. So pull out the pl metal clip here, put the pin through it, and then push it back into the roof. It's much easier to do it that way. One other quick tip is when you put the weather stripping back in and the door frames, it may catch the edge of the headliner, so it may look like this. Make sure you use the plastic trim tool to push the headliner out just a little bit to let the weather stripping go back into its normal installation position, and it'll look much better like this. And after all that work, things worked out quite well. The headliner, it's not in perfect condition, but it's far better than the one that I had in there before. So if you like the information on this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos to the channel. And if you wanna help support the channel, check out the links in the description section. And I am now an Amazon influencer, so go check out the products that I either reviewed or used on my channel on my Amazon store. So thanks for coming to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.